Hi, my name is Jessica Bickle. I'm in the physics department, and this is an introductory tutorial on how to use perusal. So the first thing that I want to talk about is what is perusal about? And perusal is about getting students to read collaboratively. I'm coming at this from a sciences uh, perspective, and in this case, we have a goal that students are actually reading the textbook before they come to class. The idea being that they can read the definitions in the textbook, and then we can spend more time going deeper into the material during class and get at some of those traditional misconceptions in introductory physics. Um, and in this way, we're spending the class time in a more effective way, and they should be able to learn more and understand more. Um, the reality is, no matter how much we assign the textbook, the textbook is really big. It's so big that in more recent editions, they've been breaking it up into two pieces. Um, students have traditionally been able to get away with not reading. And when they read, learning to read the textbook is a skill that a lot of them haven't figured out yet. And so when they read, they don't understand it. And so they quit. They stop. They don't read the textbook. So this is the framework that I've been coming from. Um, this is also potentially a useful tool in arts and humanities where you want to have discussions about text or in situations where you want to have students critiquing each other's um, documents, which can be done in Google Docs, but could also be done here. So there are a lot of frameworks, but the basic idea of perusal, it is at a collaborative reading. So how does that work? This is a screenshot of my perusal page. And what you can see, this is that same textbook. It's page 631 and 632. All of these yellow pieces are areas that students have highlighted and asked comments. I'm going to focus on this pink one to start with. And this one is this comment that we can see on the right here. I want to bring your attention to two things. One is that the color of this back, back bubble uh, says what student it is. I uh, deleted their initials for privacy reasons, but it does show the student initials. You can make uh, reading anonymous, but this particular one, I did have them with initials. And so what we see is one student asked a question about the text. Another student responded and was able to clarify. And then that first student was able to reply again and um, able to continue this conversation um, so that they can actually have a conversation about the text. So one of the things that perusal does is it takes it out of the isolation that reading the textbook typically is and brings it into a collaborative space where the students can work together the same way that we're having them work uh, in group work on um, to do problem solving in a lot of our science uh, classes. So I want to invite you to join my classroom because I think the easiest way to teach you about perusal is to invite you into the perusal uh, area. So I'd like to invite you to go to perusal.com, click on login and make an account with your CSU email and enroll in the course. And the course number is Bickle, B-I-C-K-E-L hyphen 26JM2. I'm going to pause for a moment so you can write that down. And now we'll go to the perusal. So this is the perusal site. I'm going to start by logging in. if my computer wants to load. There we go. And so this is the homepage that you'll see. You can see that I've been using Perusal for a while. I have a number of archived courses. Um, these are my current courses. Um, this is actually set up for fall of this semester. Um, the course that I'm gonna have you guys join is this one. I gave a similar presentation to this. Uh, this I, I received a Teaching Enhancement Award, one of the T awards through the Center for Faculty Excellence. And I gave a presentation about perusal and I made a dummy course for that one. And we're going to use that to look at things. But as you're exploring, you can create a course, you can copy a course if another instructor has already made something, or you can enroll in the course. In order to get to this course, I'd like to ask you to um, in, enroll in the course. Um, because I'm already there, I can just click here. Um, Right now I'm showing this as the instructor. I'll go back and show this to you as a student in just a minute. But if you're logged in and doing this simultaneously with me, you're already logged in as a student in this course. So let's look at here. All my assignments will show up on the left-hand side here. I've already made one assignment because this was for the teaching award. It was due on Monday, May 2nd. Let's say I need to adjust that. Well, I can come over here, click edit, and there's a whole lot of things. I could change the due date. Let's change our due date. Options. 
Let's change the due date. I'm going to change the due date right now. Now it's going to be due at the end of the month. Okay. I can give additional instructions to my students. Say hello and make one comment. This means that when you open this um, assignment as a student, that's what you will see. I'm going to assign it to the entire class. You can choose to make it anonymous. Um, you will always be able to see what students make what comments, but they may be able to, uh, they, they wouldn't be able to in this case. So for right now, let's save those changes. Now let's go look at this assignment. I'm going to, I can either click on it here to choose my assignment and then I can open it. So if you look here, one of the things that I didn't talk about is um, how many assignments are needed for full credit or how many comments are needed for full credit. I'm going to come back there. But notice that this is really the assignment information. It opens up here. So the due date is Wednesday, August 31st. That's what we just adjusted. My words to you were say hello and make one comment. That's showing up here. And so let's start making comments. I'm actually going to click here because somebody's already commented. It was me. Um, and this was a uh, introductory as to how to use it. And I also wanted to highlight some of the things that this can do. Um, you can put in, if I'm coming down here, um, notice I can insert a link. And so this is a link to a NASA video. And we can go ahead and open it up in another window. Um, we can put in equations. And so um, for anybody that knows LaTeX, we can put in equations. What is, um, oh, there's my NASA video opening up. Um, but I wanted to come back here. Let's make an equation. I can say that volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. So it does use the LaTeX, but it means that for those of us that are in the math and science direction, talking about that, um, and I just mucked it up because of where I was placing it. So let's do that. I believe. Yeah, I mucked up my equation because of where I put it. Let's get rid of that one that I just did. Let's just leave the old one. Um, so we've got abilities to do equations. And this really helps for, like I say, I'm coming from the science background. So these are things that I care about. Um, let's look down and see if there's something else. This is a comment led, uh, left by another faculty member. Um, are people typically getting full scare scores on their reading? My answer, I usually see scores of 8 to 10 out of 10, because I, uh, I assign these out of 10, for people that are actually trying. Um, and so we can continue to make all sorts of comments. Um, you can see all the student comments, etc. cetera. Um, let's go back to that idea of uh, grading. So I want to come back here. I want to look at edit. And I want to come out to the scoring part. Um, typically, go away. Um, you can see that I can either use my course settings or I can put specific settings for this particular assignment. I typically make my assignments out of 10 points. Um, there's a whole lot of this at the uh, perusal website uh, in order to um, look at this. One of the things that I think are helpful is they have some ideas on what are some uh, they've got some preset scores. So their holistic grading is looking at annotations, opening the assignment, reading this. I'm going to actually click there for right now. Um, you're getting some points for making annotations. You're getting some points for opening the assignment. And you can adjust how many points they're getting. So you have a lot of control over how the students are getting the points. I typically use a basic on the holistic grading, but I make my annotations more um, for a reason that I'll come back to in just a minute. I don't currently use quizzes. So I zero that one out. Let's save changes and we'll go there. Okay. So one of the other things, if I come back in here, um, if I actually edit my assignment is in the option and is in the scoring. Did I say how many I needed to make? I did not say how many uh, uh, comments I needed to make on this one. Okay. It must be back in They've recently updated, and so I've got a couple of things that I'm still figuring out where they are. Let's go to um, okay. This is the uh, gradebook since I clicked here. 
because Tice um, actually made a comment. He's actually got some points for his comments. Um, Marcus and Melissa both joined this uh, 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 test class. Um, they opened the syllabus, but they did not make any comments. So they're, they're currently graded. You'll notice that this is all graded automatically. And even the comments, let me go back there. Even the comments are graded by an AI. So if I come here, I want to look at uh, show comment scores. I want to come back here. Um, if I come here, uh, you'll notice um, all of the comments, and I will show this to you again in the in the settings, all of the comments are scored. They're scored from 0, 1, and 2. They're scored by an AI, and they are scored by thoughtfulness. So if there's something that's actually engaging with the text, showing some, some demonstrations of engaging with the text, that would get a 2. Um, if it's getting, there's, there's something there, it's going to get a one. I don't understand is typically going to get a zero or yeah, agree is also going to get a zero. Um, and that's going into uh, how the scoring is. This is also why I mentioned a moment ago that I typically make my comment scores. I, I jack them up a bit so that you can get up to about 150% credit because I want my students getting full credit if they have between one and two for all of their comments. I don't expect them to get completely deep thoughts on all of their comments. So I make um, I, I make it a little bit more. And they are graded on, in this case, their two most thoughtful comments. So the AI is also biasing. If they give one zero, one one, and one two, it's gonna grade the one and the two. It's gonna give them the best grade possible. So if I look here, are people typically trying, these are medium thoughtful comments. If I come back up here at the very top, notice this is a longer discussion, a longer thought. This is usually going to get higher points. And this one got a score of zero. I'm adding in a, a video and giving an equation. This one isn't a very thoughtful, at least from the AI's point of view. I can also go back and manually score this. I can flag it as inappropriate. Um, so if it's, if a student is, uh, um, plagiarizing or if something's going on, that's what that flag of inappropriate is. Okay, so I wanted to come back to my settings. I wanted to come here because this is where I was going to be able to set assignment score precision. Where is my number of Okay, the perusal has moved. The number of points you need to make or number of comments that you need to make for full credit. I am here it is. Okay, I found my full credit. Um on a specific on a they're they're adjusting this so now you can do this on an assignment specific basis, which is nice. So I might say if I do it here in the scoring, it's gonna be for my entire course, but I can override it for any specific assignment. Um, if it's a full chapter, I recommend around seven. That's about what they're recommending too. You can choose uh, late scores and partial credit. Perusal gives you a lot of flexibility there. Um, and when, if you change things and you change them in the course level, you'll notice it automatically recalculates. A um, couple of things. All my assignments are here. I can see everything that's been put in the library. I only made an assignment on the syllabus so far, but I also loaded my old um, presentation from the T. Uh, and this was a T award with Gerald Walker. So I've got the old one here. Um, and I have got an equation sheet because I was copying this from one of my other classes. And I often ask my students to annotate the equation sheet. So this gave you an example of what kind of things you can put in the library. And you can have things in the library that students have access to, even if there's not an assignment on it. Um, you can make announcements. Um, you can allow students to send you private chats. And I invite you, if you've got questions, log into this and send me a chat or shoot me an email. I'm, I'm more than willing to answer questions. But let's also let me see, uh, let, let me show you how it looks to, oh, two other things before I go into a student. A um, couple of things. You get, as a, as a faculty member, we get to see what's going on with the assignment. I've got one student that submitted one work. Tice has submitted one comment. I've got two students that are currently registered for the class that have submitted no work. So I can see that, and that lets me, uh, that gives me some ideas of what's going on. I can extend deadlines on for individual students. 
So I can look at any of my students here and extend a deadline. Um, analytics lets you look at all sorts of things, what's going on with your grade distribution, when are people looking at it and annotating it. And one of the most important is actually the confusion report. The confusion report is basically looking at, it highlights where students are having the most questions. So if I'm looking actually at my textbook, if a lot of students, if I go back to the one that I was looking to my, my actual original presentation, if I've got a lot of students commenting on one area and, and it has a lot of comments there, that confusion report is going to give me details about the fact that a lot of students are commenting there and I take me to their comments. And in that way, I can take that information and bring it back to the classroom. Um, I can also look at all of the comments. You'll see that because this is a test, uh, 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 a, a test class, all of, most of them are from me because I, ha I don't have many of you joining in yet. Um, but there's, there's that. So then I wanted to say, I would like to view this as my student. Where is my student? Yep, that's my help. Uh, I view as student. Ah, there's my student view. I'm going to look at my student view. And this just gives you for those of you that are just viewing without logging in, this lets you see how the students see it. So some of the settings over here have disappeared, but I can still see my scores. So on the syllabus, because I haven't logged in as this student yet, uh, let's actually go make it a, a, a common. It gives you a, a welcome. Um, yellow highlights are started by the students. Blue highlights are started by the instructors. Sometimes that helps. Again, you can see that this is going on here. Um, this is my test student response. Notice I can see me. My name is now test student. Um, I can see the instructor comments. I can reply to them. And now if I go back to my scores, Okay, you can set when it's set to release. I'm going to adjust this as soon as I get back in here so that if you guys are wanting to look at things, you can see. Um, if I look at the assignment, you'll notice that when I came into mine, they can't see the scores. They don't see the scores on individual comments unless you release them. I don't recommend it because you want students focused on engaging with the text, not on their scores. Um, yeah, uh, you can look at all the conversations. So I can flip down here. This is a list of all the conversations. Bolds are one that you haven't seen yet. This is in both the student and the instructor view. You can make bookmarks. You can make private notes. You can star comments. Um, and you can look at page thumbnails, which is going to be helpful in some situations. Anyway, that's, I think, all I've got. If you've got questions, feel free to send me a chat. I could come on here, 101. I'm going to start a conversation with the instructor and say, instructor, I have a question. And now it's going to actually email me. And this is connected directly to my email. And I would know that one of my students has a question. And so if you have a question, I invite you to shoot me an email, either through perusal or through my email. I'll put it up one more time. It's highlighted right down here. And um, best wishes. Have a great time.